So, you're ready to become bougie. You want to become pretentious. You want to become fancy. You want to join a country club or a golf club and become one of those people. Well, I'm one of those people too. It may be the very best decision you ever make for your golf game, your social network, your lifestyle, your family. There are so many benefits that come along with being a member of a private club. Or you could be making one of the biggest financial mistakes of your life and it could ruin you. It's probably not gonna ruin you, but it could end up not being a good experience. I've been a member of a private club for over a decade now, but when I joined that first club, let's just say there was some like bait and switch happening there. I didn't know what I was doing. I'd never even played a private golf course before I joined my first club. And the things that they told me to be true didn't necessarily turn out to be true. So my goal is to help you avoid those pitfalls. We are talking about 10 things you need to ask before you join a private club. This is gonna help make sure that it is a positive thing for you, for your family, for your needs, and it becomes one of the best things you do in your life, as opposed to a burden, a frustration, something that well, just kind of sucks. So if that sounds right, if that sounds like what you're looking for, let me give you some tips, help you go in eyes wide open and make this a good decision for you. Also, real quick side note, I've got a whole list of 31 different questions at the link below. There's a whole blog post, uh, but 31 questions in a YouTube video just kind of seemed like a lot. So if you want some additional questions, some additional things to think about while you're watching this, just go click the link. You don't have to opt in or anything. It's just a blog post, but it might be useful for you. Okay, the first question is just a question for you to ask yourself. Most of the rest of these are going to be to actually ask the club before you actually join. So that first question is, what is your goal in joining a club? Now, it might seem obvious, but my guess is it may not be obvious for you. You're just like, oh, that's what my friends are doing, or oh, that's what we do when we have a certain amount of money. But understand what your goal in joining is is going to help inform which club is going to be right for you. Are you playing so much golf that you're just looking to pay one monthly fee so the value per round ends up being better? Are you looking for a place that becomes your second home? The kids go take tennis lessons and hang out by the swimming pool and drink cocktails and all of your friends are a part of this? Well, that's gonna be a different experience than if you were to join, say, a dedicated golf club a place where it's really all about the golf and you don't get all of those country club amenities. So understanding why you want to join and really being honest with yourself, is it just for the social status? Is it just for the golf course? Knowing that is gonna make your decision around which club, how much you wanna spend, and if even joining a club is right for you, it's gonna make all those decisions a little bit more clear. All right, next questions are going to be ones you're going to ask the club to get as much information about the process as possible so you go in eyes wide open and know what you're getting yourself into. So question number two is, is there a waiting list? If it's a 10 year waiting list to get in and you've got to have eight members sponsor you, then that may not be a reality for you. But if you can get in right away, then that all of a sudden opens up doors. So before you get too far into the process, just understanding, is this a place I can even join right now? Or am I gonna have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops and wait for a whole long period of time in order to get in? That's probably going to affect your decision one way or another. So understand right up front, is there a waiting list or is it open? That is going to help make your decision a lot easier. Number three is, obvious, but there's a lot that goes into it, and it's how much does it cost to join? So obviously, with most places, there's going to be an initiation fee. Is that initiation fee 5000 10000 50000 100000 500000 I mean, pick a number. You will find a club that charges that for its initiation. It can be pretty staggering. And so understand, what is that initiation? Can you afford it? And is there a way that you can pay it over time? Often, there is a junior membership or an executive membership. So if you're under a certain age, say 40, uh, that initiation fee might be lower, or there might be a way to pay it over a longer period of time. So that's something you should consider. But the initiation fee is just one side of things. How much are the monthly dues? Are they 300 a month, 500 a month, 1,000 a month, 2,000 a month? That is going to have a big bearing on your budget. And so you might be thinking that this place that's right down the street from you, oh yeah, that seems nice until you find out it's 25 grand a year to be a member. And you were thinking you had budget for like $10,000 a year. Understanding those costs right up front is really important but we're not done. You probably know about initiation. You probably know about dues. You probably have a fairly accurate representation of what you're looking for. But think about all of the other fees that are out there. Is there currently an assessment? Are there service fees tacked onto your dues? Uh, do you have to pay extra for a locker? What are cart fees? What are guest fees? Do you have to take a caddy? If so, what is the recommended rate? So you've got your initiation and your dues, yes, but all of a sudden you can add hundreds of dollars to your monthly bill through all of these other fees that you might not have considered. So when you're talking to the membership director, when you're talking to the club, make sure you have a full, accurate representation of what all the fees associated with membership look like. 
Fourth question, you might have heard me just gloss over this, but the fourth question is, is your club an equity club or a non-equity club? So essentially, these are two different types of country clubs. An equity club means you have ownership in the club. It is member owned. A non-equity club means you do not have membership. And there are pros and cons to each of these things, but it's really important to understand the differences so that you don't get yourself into trouble down the line. With an equity club, one of the big benefits is that you get a say. You get to vote on what's happening. You actually can have a little bit of a voice. And so whatever the membership prefers and what they vote on, that's generally what's going to happen. With a non-equity club, you don't necessarily get a say. There might be an advisory board, but chances are there's some company or organization or person that owns it all and what they say go. Right now, I'm a member at a non-equity club, so there are some benefits. Any capital improvements, anything like that, uh, they just do. We are not going to be assessed from them. But we also don't get a say on when those things happen. So that can lead to deferred maintenance. Uh, that can lead to frustration with the members where they're like, well, why aren't we doing this or why aren't we doing that? In a non-equity club, you don't necessarily get much of a say. But we also don't have food and beverage minimums. Lots of times at equity clubs, there is a food and beverage minimum. So that's one of those extra expenses to ask about. One of the benefits of an equity club is that you can potentially recoup some of your initiation fee if you decide to leave. So oftentimes the way it works is you decide to leave and when someone new comes in, they buy that membership from you and you get paid a certain amount based on your previous investment. If you were joining a non-equity club, then, well, chances are your initiation fee is just poof gone. You can leave whenever you want, but when you do, that initiation fee goes with it. So if you're thinking about joining a non-equity club with a very high initiation fee, you're going to want to make sure that it's a place you want to be long term so that you're not out that money. And just to touch on one more aspect of that is with equity clubs, there is the potential to be assessed. So if the membership takes those voting rights that they get and they decide they want to build an entirely new golf course or build a new clubhouse or do any sort of renovations that cost a lot of money, then you can be on the hook if they assess members. This could be anywhere from a small number, maybe it's a thousand, two thousand dollars a member to a big number like $15,000, $20,000, $25,000 a member, and if the club votes on that and you are assessed, then you are on the hook for that money. So you might join being like, cool, monthly dues, got that. Initiation, no problem. Well, if then in the next year there's a big assessment, it could add a significant amount to your monthly dues and or require you to write a big check up front. So I realize we're spending a lot of time on this, but this is one of the biggest decisions you can make when joining a club. So the next question is an important one, is do you like the golf course? Now, I'm assuming because this is a golf channel and you're watching this, that you are a golfer and that's going to be one of your primary reasons for wanting to join a country club. But not all golf courses are created equally. So even if there's a great deal on a membership or it's really convenient to you, if you don't love the golf course, are you going to find yourself over time growing more and more resentful over having to always play the same golf course? So the first place I was a member at, after a year or so, I found myself realizing I just don't love the golf course. I've got a big slice and like half the holes on that course were dog leg lefts. So for me, it's like it just wasn't that enjoyable to play. Now, this is only one aspect of joining. If they have a wonderful clubhouse, wonderful athletic facilities, if you play other sports, then it may not be as big of a deal. But if your primary reason for joining is the golf course, you want to make sure it's a place you like, because even if everything else feels like a good deal, if you don't like the course, then you're probably not going to get as much value and as much enjoyment out of it as you should. Next question, how do most people play golf? Do they walk? Do they ride? Do they take a caddy? This might seem like a minor thing or something to not consider, but this can have a really big bearing on your experience at your club. So for instance, a lot of like old school clubs in the Northeast require you to take a caddy every round. So if you're doing that and you don't necessarily enjoy playing with caddies, that's not going to be a good club for you. Also, if you're having to pay anywhere from $80 to $150 to the caddy every single time you play golf, that adds up. If you're someone that hosts for work and you're going to be covering the caddy fees and the greens fees for people when you're hosting them for work, those fees can add up. Alternatively, if you're someone who absolutely loves to walk, but you join more of a resort style course with crazy long transfers between green and tea, and you have to take a cart, then that's not necessarily going to be a club you're going to like. So make sure you understand, generally speaking, how do people get around the course? Are there caddies? And if so, are they mandatory? Is it a cart-friendly course? Is it a walking-friendly course? What do most of the members do? Do they take a cart? Do they take a caddy? Do they walk? Because even if you can do all three of those things, if 80% of the membership prefers to ride and you prefer to walk, then you might find yourself not being able to fit in as much as you would like. So something to consider that a lot of people end up overlooking. 
So real quick, I just realized this is the perfect time to plug something that I never talk about on YouTube, and that's my golf society, the 80 Club. We're a group of about 225 diehard, dedicated golfers that love to travel and experience new places. I tell people the 80 Club's probably a good fit for you if you fit the following three criteria. Are you a member of a cool course and you really like to show it off to people that will appreciate it? Number two, you like to travel for golf and experience new places yourself. And number three, you like to geek out about golf on the internet. If that sounds like you, I have a feeling you're gonna kinda love the 80 Club. We got a pretty special thing going. So I'll link to that below. If this sounds interesting to you, you can click the link, you can apply, and uh, you tell me a little bit more about yourself, and I'll get back to you and we'll see if it's a good fit. But we got a pretty good thing going, and I think you might love it. So if you do join this club, or if you're already a member of a club, I'd love to hear from you. All right, when you join, who can use the club and how much? So different clubs have different rules around what constitutes a member. So for some, it's just an individual. You join and you are the only person that can use it. If you wanna bring your wife or your kids, you gotta pay a guest fee. For many other clubs, you join and it's for your immediate family. So your wife can go play, your kids can go play. That's what you're probably going to see most often. But you should also understand are what are the playing privileges? Are each primary member, say you and your spouse, do you each have equal access? Or is there a player A and a player B? Sometimes the player B isn't able to make morning tea times, or they're not able to play in events like the club championship or the member guest tournament. Uh, so understanding what those limitations are and what constitutes a member is gonna be really important. Also, there are some clubs that have vertical memberships. These are usually more destination or resort oriented clubs, but that means family members one level above or below you also get to be members. So for instance, you join, your family's a member, and then uh, let's say you have adult kids. Well, then your adult kids and their families can go use the club, or your parents, they can go use the club. Chances are, if you're looking for that type of membership, you already know what that's all about, but I just wanted to be comprehensive here and let you know that at some places, that is a thing. Next question, and this is one people don't often ask, but it is a really important one to do, and that is, can I see the club calendar and or the tee sheet? So let's say you're a guy, maybe the time you like to play most, there's a ladies group, and that time is blocked off at the exact same time every single week, so you can't go do that. Maybe you like to play first thing in the morning, but there's already a group that books out those tea times, and so you can't go play by yourself on your own. If you wanna play first thing in the morning, you have to join that group. So being able to look at the tea sheet and the club calendar and understanding what are the groups, when are tea times blocked off, is the course closed a lot for outings or tournaments where outside people come in and they take over the course for a day, just understanding when the restrictions are around when you can play to make sure that there's nothing that conflicts with when you wanna play most is gonna be important to check out. And so just by saying, hey, can I see the calendar? Can I see the tea sheet to get an idea of what things look like week in and week out is super helpful as you're making a decision. All right, two more questions to consider. And the next one is, what does the membership look like? Is it old, is it young, is it Republican, is it Democrat, is it families, is it individuals? Understanding what that club demographic is like is gonna be really important based on question number one, what is your goal in joining? Are you looking for a place to bring your family and create a whole social network of people? Are you looking for a place specifically to host business contacts? Are you looking for a place where you can relax with other retirees? Um, understanding what the demographic looks like and what some of those groups within the club are like is gonna be really important to make sure that you just fit in with people. And what I would ask of the membership director is see if they can introduce you to a couple different members. Maybe you're able to go out and play the course with them, but talking to an existing member, I found that usually, yeah, they wanna talk up their place, they to talk about all the good things, but usually you'll find someone that's going to tell you the pros and the cons. They're going to give you honest feedback around the good parts of the club, the bad parts of the club, what the demographic is like, who the people are like, what the different groups are. There's no better way to learn more about a club than to talk to existing members. So that's what I would go ask. A great opportunity for this is if you're playing a preview round with the membership director, see if he's willing to invite a couple members to come out and play with you so that you can kind of get a sense of what the vibe's like and talk to everyone and ask your questions. And finally, like I said, I've got a whole bunch more questions below so click the link below if you want to go more in depth here. But the last major question I would consider is another one for you. And that's simply, are you actually going to use it? It can be really easy to get wrapped up in the excitement of joining a club. Like there's, let's be honest, being a member of a private club, there's a lot of cool things that go along with it. But if your club's 45 minutes away, if you realistically don't have time to play golf, if there's not enough other facilities at the club that revolve around your interests, you may just not use it that much. You may have gotten like roped into talking to friends that are members and they're like, yeah, it's great. And then you end up playing golf like once a month and then your cost per round is more expensive than a round at Pebble Beach. <laughs> Trust me, that happens a lot. So ask yourself, 
Am I actually gonna use this? When am I gonna use this? What does a day at the club actually look like? Is this a place where there's enough facilities where I can go after work with my kids and my family? Can I pop over during my lunch break and hit balls on the range? Ask yourself all of these questions and get an accurate representation of if it's something you're actually gonna use. Because if it's not something you're gonna use very often, then I don't know, maybe it's still worth it for you, but there might be a better way to get more value for your investment and your money uh, than joining this particular club, so. Just something to consider. So there you go. I hope you got some value out of this. My name is Sean Ogle. I'm the founder of this thing here, Breaking 80, where generally what we do is cool golf product reviews and golf course reviews. If you got some value out of this, maybe a thumbs up button, maybe consider hitting subscribe, do all those YouTube things. And uh, if you have further questions about joining a club or things you're considering that uh, you want advice or feedback on, just drop a comment and I'll do my best to answer every single one. I hope you have an excellent day. I hope you find the perfect club for you and I hope it works out great. And uh, with that, I'll see you on the next video. Peace.